Okay, well, in this video I'm going to talk more about <clears throat> the ongoing economic end of this pandemic and what's been happening to my friends. Uh, first, I would like to wish a happy Easter to all of you out there uh, who are Russian Orthodox, because today is Easter uh, for that religion. Um, I finally got to talk to some of my friends after not speaking with anyone for a few weeks over this past weekend. <coughs> and uh, I found out some interesting things. Well, as we all know with the lockdown, and all of us, no matter what country you live in, are suffering with this stuff, um, you know, they are becoming stricter. Some uh, counties here make you wear a mask. A lot of people are wearing masks and gloves. Everybody's wiping everything down. And even though, you know, at least where I am, it doesn't look like there's this giant amount of sickness in that. People are questioning the results. Uh, people have been in this lockdown. And then this crazy check stuff. It gets better. Well, anyway, after I talked to some of my friends and, and looking at how this is affecting the economy, uh, some people are out of work. Construction workers, all my buddies there in construction, they're considered uh, essential. So they're working right along and, you know, nothing's impeded them. Okay, several other people I know, unfortunately, things did not work out well for them. Uh, one of them, two individuals I know, and you have to remember, we're all in our late 50s, early 60s, this group of people. We're all about the same age. Um, one individual was a couple weeks ago, they kind of retired him early. He was looking to retire in about another year or so. And uh, he worked for this company a long time, and it was construction work. Um, well, they come up to him just before this whole thing happened, cut him a deal with a severance package. He can collect unemployment for so many months and all this other stuff. But they retired him, and he took, he took the deal. <clears throat> he took this early retirement package they gave him. So he made out okay. Unfortunately for another friend of mine, I remember he worked for one company for many years and for some reason about four or five years ago left, went to a competitor doing the same thing. And I think he said he was 61 or something and they just told him he's done. They cut him loose because they said with the business uh, being down and everything else, uh, he was just let go. Okay, they kind of gave him some severance or whatever because of his age, but he's caught between a rock and a hard place. He's only, you know, he's older. He doesn't have 15, 20, 30 years with a company. He's got like five. They know he's old, so they're, <clears throat> they just cut him loose. A couple other people, someone else I knew was let go from their job. Okay, and then there are those... There are several people I know who are unemployed and collecting an unemployment check. So, personally, that's what I've come across. There's a lot of people getting hit financially and permanently losing their job, not getting laid off or uh, furloughed or whatever, but are actually losing their jobs. And like I said, uh, when I spoke to everybody, I said, does anybody know of anyone who's sick or ill and in my group of friends or in the area I am no nobody so far has uh, gotten ill or quarantined and no no one's in bad health so that's good news but um, as we go on with this because uh, like several people in some of the comments when I said there's like an economic war or this is planned they go well, it's not planned because nobody knows what's going on well that's part of the plan of the people doing this, is to create confusion, create mayhem. I mean, nobody knows what's going on. Everybody I talked to said that this lockdown or shutdown in the United States can't go on for much longer, a couple more weeks or something. And you'll see it. It's going to have to because people are starting to get a little antsy about this, okay? 
If this goes on longer than a few more weeks or the end of this month, you're going to start seeing more problems, protests, and other things. Okay. Um, and the next other big thing, these checks. Okay, that's another joke. I have not received mine or anything yet. But I guess people are starting to get them. So everyone's talking about this. Okay, and the one fellow I know who's laid off, um, you know, he said, he come up and said, well, I went, checked my bank account, and he goes, I seen where I got the direct deposit for the $1,200. He goes, I checked it later in the day or whatever. There were two deposits. He's single, you know, lives alone, and he got two payments. And now he went, he's trying to call and find out what to do, you know, and he's telling him, I said, well, just keep it, spend it. He goes, no, they're going to want it back. And he doesn't know what to do. And so this fiasco of them sending this money, people are getting double payments. People who are deceased or, or whatever are, are getting payments, and the family members don't know what to do, and the Treasury Department doesn't have an answer, okay? It's a total total mess and everybody you get your check you get your check you know and all of this all of this is done just to confuse people and and to throw them off from the big picture okay this, this is what all this is because a lot of people go which twelve hundred dollars going to do you know which depending on how you live yeah it's not a lot of money and your monthly expenses especially if you've lost your job okay um, it, it all comes down to where it just confuses people and keeps them occupied when things are going on. That's why I'm saying, in the meantime, people are losing their jobs. They're not getting laid off. They're being terminated. Okay? And what this is, is this another restructuring. Okay? Now, I've lived through this in my life. Everything was great back in the 80s under the old system where you had unions and a decent paying job and you worked 40 hours a week. Well, once the Cold War ended, the economy shifted, and in the 90s you had this investing in money. And, you know, I remember being 31 years old and having, starting to plan my retirement and where I was going to buy property for a little home up in the Adirondacks, a little summer home. Well, by 2001, that all came to an end with the first, uh, you know, 9-11, Twin Towers goes down, stock market crashes. All that money we had was gone. Manufacturing stopped where I, you know, lived, and I had to find another job. I was out of a job permanently after having almost 15 years in the place, and it just total disaster. And what I'm saying is when they're going to change the global economy, they're not going to do it over nothing. It's in steps, and it takes many years. And that was the first step. The whole Northeast, the whole industrial area, that, that was wiped out. Industries all moved. All the aerospace is down uh, by Las Vegas, around in that area is where all your aerospace is. Some of it went up to Washington. I guess Martin Marriott or GE built a plant down in South Carolina outside of Charleston. But here's the thing, the jobs I had 30 years ago, I could go to a GE plant there, get a job there with newer equipment and new project, building aircraft parts, but I'll still be making the same pay that I did, the same amount of money per year that I did 30 years ago, okay? This is the thing. All right, they've moved in industry where the cost of living was higher up in the Northeast down to these states where the cost of living is lower, and they get away with putting a new factory and paying people less money. That is how they make a profit, okay? And this is the end game, and now you're seeing it. So it was 2001, then that fiasco with the last recession back in... 2008, 2009. Now, this is when I had a bunch of major medical problems, so I was out. I had open heart surgery, I had stroke, all this other stuff. So I was already out of work when all this happened. And I was just told when I got out of the hospital, you no longer have a job here. I didn't work for the place for more than 
and a few months. They just told me you're terminated. When you're up to it, come get your tools. So I was out of work. I was on unemployment for a while. Um, just about everybody in the country was. Industry just came to a standstill. It uh, didn't matter what type of factory you worked in, but in the state of North Carolina, nobody was working more than 30 hours a week. That's how the company survived. Whatever employees they didn't lay off or get rid of, they were working about 30 hours a week, more or less part-time. Okay. That's also when this housing bubble burst. Now this is another con game. Because what they did with this housing market crisis or the housing market bubble is a lot of these banks were getting these foreign countries. There's a lot of these small foreign countries that are fairly stable. Iceland, I think, was one of them. Uh, you know, the Scandinavian countries, very conservative, invest, run things well. well what it is, they suckered them in, into buying, investing their government's money in these funds because they're small countries and basically that's how they survive. And then when this bubble hit, not only did it hurt a bunch of people in the U.S., but it, it just about bankrupted some pretty financially stable countries, put them in a disarray, okay, ruined them, all right. This was another phase, creates more instability, and about, that's about the time that Greece went under with this European Union and the World Bank that's when Greece, they called in all their debts and set up some kind of system where they can keep the country, but you see, this, this is the weird thing when I say economic war. They made an agreement with Greece, something about their whole monetary system, which I guess countries control their economies, okay? But whatever their bailout deal was, the deal was, once you sign this document, if these people get voted out of office, this agreement can never change. So, in a very strange way, Greece lost its sovereignty as a nation when it is directed from an outside authority about their economy that once you enter this agreement, it cannot be changed no matter what your elected government wants. So that means no matter who you vote in office, they have no power. So they have actually lost their sovereignty as, as a nation. They are more or less owned by the world banking system. I don't know who the hell it was, but they are not in control of their country anymore. And then the scary thing was that Italy, Spain, Portugal, they were all going to fall like dominoes, but it didn't happen. Okay, I don't really know what the, the story of the economy in uh, Italy is. I remember they had it on Spain where unemployment was high and things were bad, okay? You talk about it a while, then you don't hear nothing no more, okay? So I think they were trying to do this where they would bankrupt these countries and take them over, and then... Uh, the World Banking Authority would control all these countries one by one as they went bankrupt. Well, they stopped that. And so now we're getting, they shut down the whole damn world economy at once, which is a pretty good feat. And they do all this coronavirus, lockdown, we're going to send you a $1,200 check, and they screw that all up, and more confusion, more mayhem. But I'm not quite sure what the underlying thing is is they're trying to get a hold of the global market. Now, my wife found an article, and in the description box, I'll put a link to it. And it describes how the U.S. is selling treasury bonds and trying to ingrain that the U.S. dollar is the world currency, okay, for uh, years in the European Union, they wanted the euro to be the standard and break away from the dollar as their standard. And I think Germany tried it and that, but then something, something went wrong, they couldn't. So um, they got some kind of plan where they're going to push the U.S. dollar, and, and if you read the article, it explains how they're doing this. And basically what countries are trying to do is salvage their economies by 
doing this, but the link will be in the description box for this article and check that out. So you see a lot of this is going on and like people said, behavioral modification. Well, they got them with the virus. Everyone's scared and modified their behavior. So they proved that out. Now, I think they're going to loop you in financially, bankrupt you, and then it's going to modify your behavior, and you're going to have to do some stuff too. And I'm not even going to get into all these theories of how we're going to get back by tracking you with your cell phone, putting a chip in you, or you'd have to take your temperature three times a day in the workplace to stay there. You know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that even gets worse. But I'm just talking about plain what's happening to people that's, you know, tangible and real, more or less, what has happened to my friends. You know, people are losing their jobs. People are facing some economic hardships. And I think these powers to be or whoever is trying to pull some kind of a global financial coup or something. So... That's about it. Everybody have a nice Sunday and stay tuned.